everyone. Welcome to Real Estate with Ryan. We're talking a little real estate. It's your weekend. It's Saturday and so excited to be with you. Hope you're doing well on a Saturday. Hope you had a good week. And thank you for tuning in to our station. Well, we always talk real estate, no politics, no none of that news, nothing but fun stuff. And the real estate market is on fire, my friends. And it's spring and it's like, where's 2021 gone? It's already almost halfway through the year. It's kind of hard to believe. Uh, if you're following what I've been doing, which you may not be following, so I'm going to tell you, <laughs> give you the scoop. I mean, it's hard to believe if you guys are like me, my daughter's homeschool and finishing up her first year of kindergarten. And I just looked and go, we have just a couple months left and she's officially done with kindergarten. It's like, where is this year gone? We've just been so busy in real estate, helping so many different people. You know, the world's gone crazy and um, just so much going on. Time just flies when you're having fun. So welcome, welcome to the show. Hope you're going to enjoy the show. If you're tuning in the first time, if you don't know who I am, my name is Ryan Coleman, owner, founder of Hometown Realty. And uh, on our show, we like to talk a little real estate, fun stuff, what goes on in East Tennessee, what happens in our backyard. We know what happens across the country. But let's talk about East Tennessee, where we're headed this year, different things. And I got a good show for you. So we know the spring market's here. And we're seeing the pickup. We sell a lot of lakefront properties, a lot of luxury properties. And today we're going to talk about non-blunders to avoid when buying waterfront. Because it's just a couple weeks away. Kind of hard to believe. And uh, waterfront property always shows best when the water's out. Not hard to believe that, right? So in East Tennessee, obviously there's certain times of the year that waterfront properties are at their peak. We just put one. Well, we didn't even put it on the market yesterday. 1.2 million offer done, sold, cash. I mean, it just doesn't always happen that easy, but that's kind of the market that we're going into. So um, thank you for tuning in. Let's talk about that. So one of the biggest things that kind of talk, that kind of was thinking about the show and different ideas. Most people don't understand that when you buy real estate that's luxury or waterfront, you really need an agent that's going to specialize into it because there's a little bit more hiccups, potential hazards, or some things that you need to know. So we're going to cover some of those. And one of these triggered the sale that we just did the other day, um, talking about a dock permit. The previous owner didn't realize that they didn't, you know, worked with a different agent and uh, didn't know where the dock permit was or didn't get a copy of it. And and so these are some of the things that when you're selling waterfront property, we want to talk about, we want to make sure you're aware of that and make sure that we don't get down to closing and uh, have any issues there. So let's talk about it. Hope you guys are doing great, staying healthy, being excited. Good to have some great weather, isn't it? It is. April sends all the love. My little ones, hope everybody had a good Easter and uh, spend time with the family. We actually went back to church. It's almost been a year since we've been back to church um, with COVID and everything like that. We had a newborn, so it was just, it was good to get back and spend a little time, and uh, the family really enjoyed it. So we're, we're going to stay consistent on that. So there's my rant, but let's uh, talk about it. So, you know, waterfront, one of the biggest things, you look at the properties, and you it, the waterfront land is not as much about the property as is the waterfront, as the land itself. Number one, let's talk about a bulkhead. If you don't know what a bulkhead is, it's one of the most important things you're going to look at when you're going to inspect a property. Bulkhead is a barrier that separates the water from the property. The buyer may be responsible for building or repairing that bulkhead. And that's not cheap if it needs some work. So, you know, when you do an inspection, make sure your contract has a clause that you're inspecting the property and the dock and the permit and covers all those areas in the bulkhead. You want to hire a certified bulkhead specialist to inspect and then get an idea of associated cost, if any. The last thing you want to do is not get it inspected and then you get a $20,000 bill to repair a bulkhead. You may not be the happiest camper. <laughs> so make sure you, number one, check the bulkhead. Now, on any type of financing with the market on fire that we're in, um, we're receiving rapid fire offers, multiple escalating. And, and I was listening to Dave Ramsey a little bit the other day, and we were chatting. And Well, not me and Dave were chatting, but I felt like we were talking with some of our customers kind of in our, in our conversations. He's saying the same thing that I'm telling my clients. You know, with real estate, everybody's kind of watching the market to see where it's going to 
fall off. You know, if you watch the stock market, it kind of goes up. And and what's the idea of 2021? Is the market going to collapse? Are we are these prices going to go away? I know we have a lot of clients that, and we just listed two yesterday. They said, Ryan, if I can get that for the price, I'm selling out. I'm going to cash out. And so that's where sellers are coming back into the marketplace that maybe didn't have the motivation before, but timing's everything in real estate. So the opportunity is here. They're cashing out, whether it's their residence, whether they're going to downsize, whether they're going to maybe buy a larger property, or maybe it's an investment cabin that we sell, or that luxury property that you know right now in that market in the next two-year period is a peak where we're going to get the most amount of buyers. We're getting a flux of people from coming from California and the West Coast area. And uh, that luxury market, it's now. So let's go take advantage of that. So there's a big audience there that's thinking that. One of the things I want to think about is in that marketplace, whatever you buy, make sure you look at your financing. One of the biggest things that we see routinely in offers that come through, uh, maybe another agent makes the offer, you know, you, you spend a lot of time with the client, you find the perfect home, um, and guess what? You don't have an updated pre-approval. Maybe you don't even have a pre-approval. Buyer's solid, but you don't. And you submit the offer, and then the agents give you like three hours to respond, and they don't have a pre-approval. Make sure you have your financing straight. Make sure you have your pre-approval. Give the seller an opportunity to accept your offer and make sure it's preparations, everything. You know the old saying, devil's in the details. Make sure you're prepared. Make sure your agent is prepared by having that updated. And yes, that could happen on a Friday or Saturday or Sunday where the banks are closed. So you either have a good lender that's going to respond quickly or be prepared and have an updated letter. So on waterfront property, why that's important, they're different. They're different. They take longer to underwrite, and last-minute decisions could actually delay the deal or jeopardize a deal altogether. One of the biggest misconceptions is, is our contracts are time is of the essence. And a lot of times, whether it's the lender, whether it's the buyer, whether it's the buyer's agent, they think that just because we have a closing date, that an extension is an automatic must. And that's not the case. You may run up into an extension in a hot market that we're in that you get to a closing date. The seller has taken the property off the market. We had multiple offers to choose from. And then you've decided to tie it up. And for whatever reason, you weren't able to be on top of it, being proactive with your financing. Now, I know things happen, but what happens if you're a week out from closing and the seller has a backup offer and it's substantially more than you pay? Not only would you run the risk of losing the property, but you may lose your escrow or they may have to renegotiate and ask for higher escrow. Trust me, I have some sellers that are doing that in properties right now. So make sure you have your ducks in a row. We'll talk about insurance as we go. That's actually number four. The insurance on our waterfront properties are quite expensive and you're going to need to do your homework. It's not going to get an instant quote. They're going to need to go out and look at the property. They're going to need to look at the FEMA flood zones. And so there's going to be a lot involved to it. Get with a good agent that's going to know good insurers that can insure waterfront property and get you the best deal. So number number four, make sure you have never neglect to consider flood insurance because it's something that if you're getting a loan, the insurance is going to be included in your mortgage payment and the lender is going to require that prior to closing. Well, 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 let's talk about number five, neglecting to find out if buyers can make improvements to the property. So in East Tennessee, we routinely have property that is protected by TVA that runs the barrier, right? Runs the barrier that they have the rights to, but that doesn't mean you can put the structure to. So, you know, let's say you wanted to put a dock routinely, let's let's say Sharps Chapel out in that way or different areas where the TVA runs a shoreline. You have access to it. You can maintain it. You can use it. You can maybe put a canoe or a kayak, but you can't put any hard structures. So make sure that you understand what improvements you can and cannot do. Uh, Very, very important waterfront home, just because it may need a dock, may not be deep enough to float a boat out. These are things that you need to know, especially the time of the year when you're buying a waterfront property. These are things that you want to do your homework and allow a larger study period in waterfront properties. 
You also want to check and make sure brush and trees and uh, debris can be removed to give you a better view. So a lot of our wildlife and, and um, protected species, some of these trees you won't be able to take down. So, you know, you look out your master and you think you could take a lot of these trees down to kind of open up the view. And guess what? You can't. So these are things that uh, you want to think about. We're coming on a break. We're talking about waterfront property, what you need to know. Stay with us on the break. we got a whole lot more, and we look forward to talking to you on the other side of the break. Stay tuned. Knoxville and East Tennessee. The region is known for its rolling hills, rivers, and lakes. There's no better place to work, live, or raise a family. Home is where your story begins. Buying or selling your home is a big decision, and you need a real estate team you can trust. I'm Ryan Coleman with Hometown Realty, your hometown experts. Whether you're buying or selling a home, let us develop a winning game plan for you. Hometown Realty is East Tennessee's number one real estate group and a proud sponsor of the Vols. I'm Ryan Coleman with Hometown Realty. The real estate market's changing every day. You need to know your home's value in today's market. Text your home address to 290-2290 for an instant, no obligation home evaluation. That's 865-290-2290. And remember, when you're ready to sell, we have a guaranteed sale program to get you in your next home stress-free. Trust your hometown experts. We've helped thousands of people just like you. All right, guys, back in the studio talking a little real estate. We're talking about nine things that you must know or blunders when buying a waterfront property. And on the other side of the break, we were chatting a little bit about your view. So if you're coming out the master, think you can take some trees down, really open up that view. Hold up. TVA may put a hold on it. And so you want to check into these things. Buyers, if you're coming from out of state, if you're not familiar with East Tennessee waterfront properties, there are some things different. We're going to hopefully try to cover all that in the show today, but there's no way we can cover it. Number one thing to do, guys. Get a great agent in your quarter, corner, quarter, right? <laughs> get, get a great agent in your corner. Get somebody that can help you that knows the marketplace, not just in one little area. I always tell everybody, you can't be an expert if you're just in one county or one subdivision. you got to know the whole market. We serve about an hour, what do you think, Nick, hour, hour and a half around in Knoxville. And so we pride ourselves in really knowing the whole market. Because as you can see, the marketplace now you got to shop. you, you got to look at all kinds of areas where maybe number one selection, but next county next to it is just as great. And uh, schools may not even be a factor for some people. Some people may be homeschooling. Some people may be private. So there's a lot of options on the table. And uh, make sure that you have somebody in your corner that understands the process. Waterfront is a little bit more complicated. And if there's a mistake, it could cost you. Also, if you're looking, we know that the properties are scarce and new ones hit the market pretty quickly and they go quickly. Visit our website. You can sign up for free. We can set you up on a custom search. We'll make sure that you know about the first listings as soon as they hit the market. And like when we just sold that was off the market that I can call you about and maybe you can buy it before it even goes live. Um, go to homesaroundknoxville.com. You can go to our lakefront property tab, sign up for free. Tell us what you're looking for. If you have any questions, we can help you find it and we can work as a team. I tell you, in this market, teamwork to make the dream work. If you don't have that, you may miss your forever home. We don't want you to see you do that. So talking about more about uh, looking at your view, let's talk about improvements. You think those improvements we were chatting about and how TVA comes in involved with it. So I pulled something from TVA and uh, buying and selling waterfront property. Uh, you can Google that, look that up. I would encourage you to probably download that article. And um, it talks about some things that if you're buying waterfront property, I just want to kind of go over with you, give you the phone number. And of course, we'll probably put this on our website as well. Keep in mind, TVA owns the land and or land rights to the property on the shoreline. It's most important to understand TVA land and land rights before you list and sell property. TVA had, does have a public land information number. I'll give you that number. It's 1-800-882-5263. So you can, any questions that you may have, uh, thinking about putting a property online, um, going to sell it, maybe you're going to sell it yourself, hopefully hire a great agent like us. But questions about maybe you're doing work on a property, these are, these are helpful information. You can get a copy of your Section 26A permit from the homeowner or your realtor, or you can contact TVA's Public Land Information Center. 
Same number, 800-882-5263, and request the permit. Very important to have that. Uh, what else? Just keep in mind, this was something that one kind of triggered this show. Um, permits do not automatically transfer with new ownership. Okay. The new owner is required to apply for a TVA Section 26A permit within 60 days of closing. Make sure when you close on the property uh, to obtain the new permit. And guess what? Your name. So that we don't have to do that process all over again. One thing to think about, let's say that your home, home, beautiful home behind us. If you're on the radio, you can't see that. But if you're in social media land, you can. This was a beautiful property that we just sold, and it did not have a dock, but it did have a TVA permit. So we had that on file. Her husband passed previous uh, years ago, and the plans was going to build one, but never got around to it. And um, so it's important for the buyer that we had all that documentation on the front end, because just because you would think that a TVA permit would go doesn't always mean that. So make sure you do your homework and cover all that. Um, let's see what else we got here. Oh, you know, changes to dock. So you got an existing dock that's there just because there's a dock there. Make sure any changes, any additions, maybe you're going two story decker. Um, make sure you check with TVA before you do that, because it could be a potential violation. And if you're selling, if you haven't disclosed it, then we get in all kinds of issues there. So more information there. You can always request it from us. If you need anything from us, it's an easy number. 693 Soul. We'll be glad to help you any way we can. Let's talk about, let's see, number six, talking to the neighbors. I think that's just a good thing to do anyway. If you're thinking about relocating or you're coming from out of state, you don't know the area. We say buying real estate is always an emotional deal. It's a kind of a feel good kind of go with your gut, right? One of the biggest things you're going to do is drive by the neighborhood. You're going to go through during the you know weekend. You're going to go through the evening. You're going to go through the morning. You get a feel of the neighborhood community. Then get out and talk to neighbors. I know we purchased a property last year, and I saw a young lady was out. I just kind of pulled down the window and rolled down and said, hey, kind of just tell me a little bit about uh, the neighborhood and the people and what's going on and do you like the area? And she was very free to tell us about the area and how hot the market was and rentals and all kinds of things. It really is very informative, especially if you're in an HOA or a community. How active is the HOA? Are you an HOA person? I know we met with some clients the other day that um, they were funny. Um, They moved into the HOA. They were brand new construction. And they said, you know what? We got big dogs. Uh, we were coming from our parents' house. This was like our first house. And uh, we got here and realized that the lot's just too small. I've got two neighbors beside me. And um, he goes, I just can't do it. I need some land. I need some dirt. I need some space. So save yourself some time talking to the neighbors. See if they have kids. If you have kids, get a feel of the neighborhood. I tell you, it's going to be the best vibe that you're going to see because remember, the last thing you want to do is move in, don't have a feel good about your neighbors, and then it's just chaos. And, and then, then then that emotional deal, you start having second thoughts. Then you call me to come out and resell it. But uh, we don't want you to go through that if you don't have to, okay? Number seven, let's look into the utilities. And um, so public water, public sewer, is it a septic? Don't forget this, that a septic tank is usually required by the lender, and a new tank can sometimes cost thousands. So do a septic inspection, right? Check the septic. Make sure it perks for as many bedrooms as we have out there. So that's something that we're required to do. Also, utilities. Now, you would, you're going to run into this, but it's almost as I was telling somebody yesterday, I said, internet is almost as important as water. And they were like, Brian, what are you talking about? I said, well, to buyers now, so many people are working from home and not having high-speed internet or internet that's maybe DSL or a speed that's functional, right, may cause your property to be overlooked. I know we have a larger property that's coming up. And just in case, is there an opportunity for a cable line to be brought in? Is If I'm buying this home, is if I need AT&T or if I need high speed or I need Comcast for my work, will they be willing to bring it? That's number one. And then number two, is there a cost? 
You also run into things where you have neighbors have an opportunity to split the cost, have conversations like that. So know that going into listing the property, that could be a deal breaker. But if you know on the front end the cost, potential neighbors, maybe you can negotiate that in the sale. But you definitely want to know that your waterfront property. Number eight, not knowing the responsibilities of waterfront homeowner. How how is the HOA and how active are they and what does the HOA cover? How about a fence? Very, very big deal. HOA is not for everybody. Please understand your rules and regulations of your HOA. So waterfront properties, make sure you get your rules and regs. Get that before making the offer or make it contingent in your offer. And number nine, not pulling permits and docks and outbuildings. Just because the docks convey doesn't mean it was permitted. And it doesn't necessarily mean the homeowners can use it. Well, that kind of wraps up the show. Hope you enjoyed the show. We're talking a little waterfront property. May will be here in a matter of weeks, and we're already starting to list waterfront property. If you're thinking about putting your waterfront property, now is the time to talk to us. We've got tons of buyers that we're working with. This one we just sold off market. I mean, we're moving things at record pace, so we'd love to talk to you. Love to market it. Remember, marketing drives the price, competition. Hopefully it means that's a happy seller for you. And buyers, if you're looking, make sure you visit our website at homesaroundknoxville.com. If you want to contact me personally, my website, easy, ryancoleman.org. And my team here, hope you are enjoying a happy, happy spring. As always, our office number is 693-SOLD, ryancoleman.org. Make sure you follow us on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all that, and we stream our programs live in case you miss it. Every Saturday, it's News Talk and Talk Radio. Hope you guys have a great weekend, and we'll look forward to seeing you next Saturday back here with Real Estate with Ryan.